Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. Today I'm here to talk about doodling. I am not a professional doodler, although I've done enough doodles, I feel like one. I learned how to doodle, I don't know, from the time I was a little kid. I played around, you know how you write your name, your birth date, or a heart, or a bird, and you do fancy schmancy things to it, and then Somewhere in life, we just give up on that. Well, for some reason, I found it again, and I took a class in how to doodle. The kind of doodling that's a little more organized, a little more in detail and in depth, and I found that I really do enjoy it. When I need to calm my mind, I will go doodle. I try to do it every day. Even if it's just one little thing, I try to do it every single day. I feel like it helps me to hone the skill, and I can't just sit and watch TV. It's not how I'm structured. Either I knit, or I crochet, or I doodle, or I cut out fussy cut stuff, or anything but just watch TV. Can't do it anymore. So, what I want to show you is something that I'm working on for the month of March, and that is this right here this is a squash book remember you saw this in another video that was the brown one well this one is in black and this one is made of five five inch squares from black cardstock that are glued together whoops sorry that are glued together there are cardboard ends that are covered in scrap scrapbook paper and I'm going to do a doodle in here every day. So I'm already behind. Here is day number one. This is March 1st, March 2nd. On every one of the doodles, there will be a little box down here where I will write the name of the doodle and the person who came up with that doodle. This one is by Bunny Wright. She's a certified Zentang entangled teacher. She went to a class outside of Providence, Providence, Rhode Island to learn how to do this, learn how to teach it, and I'm all about giving credit where credit's due whenever absolutely possible. This one is Ving by Amy Brody. She did not have the CZT after her name, say that three times, um, but I'm not sure, so I went ahead and gave her credit for it, and I apologize if she's a CZT and I did not give her credit here today. But this one is the one that folds in half, so I made the square like this one and just cut it in half, didn't leave as much of a space for anything, and then glued it on. So this will be filled with 30 different patterns of doodling, tangling, and then since there's only 30 of these and there's 31 days in the month of March, you know I'm going to do a belly band, right? I mean, kind of that was like a given. Um, so that's how I'm going to do my month of March doodles. Each page has a piece of paper that was cut. And this this is cardstock. I did cardstock because I wanted it to have some weight to it and be substantial and not bleed through on the back, even though I was gluing it. So I took black ink. I think it was stays on and just scuffed it around the edges and that's all I did to it so I cut it out I've got 13 days here and I'll cut more later so this is kept together so I can remember where all my stuff is um, if you do not have any Zentangle books or Tangle or Doodling books of any kind or you don't want to spend the money which I totally understand you can go to this place TanglePatterns.com on the internet. There's no space in between the E and the P. It's all one word. On this website, they have tons, tons of patterns. The nice thing is, is they are in alphabetical order. Underneath the header where it says the TanglePatterns.com, somewhere underneath that, there's a line that is in alphabetical order. For every letter of the alphabet, there is a link you tap on or put your cursor on the letter of the alphabet for the patterns that are that are named with that letter that you tap on. So if you tap on the P, all the stuff that pops up on the link, the next page, will all be patterns that start with the letter P. 
For those of you who don't know a lot about dueling or using this, what you will see is a paragraph that talks about the designer. And then it may say, get the design here, and then there'll be a hyperlink where you tap on that, and it will take you to the person who's designed it, to their blog, where there will be things that are called step outs. Step outs are little blocks where they show you step by step how to do the doodle. So they could go straight across, they'll go up and down, there could be three, six, nine, however complicated or uncomplicated it is, you will have these little step outs. The step outs are usually done in black and red. The black one will be your first marker. They may start the first one with a red. The next one will be your original mark you made from this one onto the second one, and then it will have a red mark showing you where the next line should be drawn. This one will have two black marks and then a line where the third one should be done, so on and so forth. Some of them have more step outs than the others. And like I said, it depends on how complicated the pattern is. If they don't have a blog and they downloaded their stuff onto directly onto this, that page that, you know, the P pattern, the step outs could be on that same page that it linked the P word to. So all you have to do is just scroll down and look and then there will be the step outs on that page. Some of them send you to a blog. Some of the step outs are on the page for the P word. All right. Now, uh, tanglepatterns.com. All right. So the next thing is I want to show you what I'll be using just in case. I don't know if I will use these, but I like doing doodles with uh, the jelly roll pins. These are jellies number sixes from Sakura. I think they're $1.99 each at Michael's. I know you can buy them in bulk on Amazon. The next thing are Micron pens. No, these are not cheap. I mean, you get three for $9.99 at Michael's. And honestly, I can't just deal with three. Then they have a package of five that I think is $19.99. I use my 40% off coupon or my 50% off coupon. I hate paying full price. So in that package, you get various different sizes. Sorry, you get various different sizes of pens. On the back of my pens, you will see that I have washi on them. And this, sorry, this is my system to tell me which pens are the older pens. The older pens where the nib or the ink may be going low or bad, have no washi on them. The newest ones have washi to remind me these are the newer pens and to use these guys first. I didn't want to leave all my pens and packages, so I put the washi tape on there. I don't know. It makes sense to me. Anyway, then I have an eraser, and this is the kind where you can click the bottom, and then the eraser comes out here. I like using it because it's triangle-shaped. It's just different. Then a pencil. You can use a number two graphite pencil. Um, soft lead. This is a number three medium hard. It's just a pencil I don't, for shading. Then I use the stubs. You can buy these at most any art store. Dick Blick, Jerry, Jerry's Artorama, A.C. Moore. I don't know about Ben Franklin because I don't think I've ever been in a Ben Franklin. You, I think you might could get them at Michael's or, and or Hobby Lobby too. They come in various lengths, fatness. I mean, there's one that's really fat. I saw the other day when I was in Hobby Lobby. Um, so I bought a package of these. And then what you do is you use them to shade. You put your pencil mark down and you rub it over the pencil mark and it shades it. And the graphite from your pencil kind of hangs out on the end here. So sometimes you can just rub this lightly on a piece of paper and you'll get shading on the leftovers from this. Okay, so let me show you where I learned to do this. Well, let me show you a class I took. Art and Soul has a class where they travel up uh, around the country and they do classes from different artists. It is not cheap and it's a weekend thing. People fly in from all parts of the country to teach their classes and if you're from out of town and go, 
um, it's going to be at your expense to pay for your hotel, your food, your travel, and everything. And then you have to, of course, pay for the classes. Like I said, it is not cheap going to these things, but it is well worth the money if you plan on doing videos or you really enjoy it so much you just can't help yourself, which would be me. Um, so I took a class with uh, Suzanne McNeil, CZT, and the CZT stands for Certified Zentangle Teacher. She went to Providence, Rhode Island, or wherever they held the classes, and took classes on how to teach, how to do, how to promote Zentangle products. And then she came to Art and Soul. I signed up for class. I had already been doing doodling before that, but after this, it got a little more intense for me. Yeah. Okay. So here's book number one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, and eight. And she has more books, but these are the ones that I refer to when I don't have the internet with me. Sometimes I'll go sit on the back porch while the dogs are outside roughhousing. And I will take one of these books out in the back porch with me. Take my sketchbook, which is usually a book like this that costs $5 from Walmart. And I take this on the back porch with me and I draw different things from the books. Sometimes I watercolor them. Sometimes I use Posca pen. Mostly this stuff is watercolors because it doesn't seep through quite as bad. I went ahead and glued my pages together because I wanted more substantial pages. These pages, I have to tell you, these babies are very, very thin. This is a watercolor, this is done in a watercolor pen, um, pen from Sakura, you know, these kind of things, you know, watercolor brushes. And it goes through on the other side. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it ghosted through. So somebody said, well, why don't you glue them together? So I did, and I ended up gluing pages together, and that way I could do one side that didn't bleed through to the other, and then did this, and if it bleeds through, no one will ever see it because two pages are glued together. So this is not an expensive hobby unless you want it to cost you more money. So when I first started, it was a simple little book. It was a couple micron pens. Actually, it was a jelly pen. And an eraser and a pencil. And that's basically, instead of shading, what I with a, one of these, I used my finger because I did not want to invest a lot of money in the very beginning because I really didn't know what I was doing. And then, of course, you know, you get in hook, line, and sinker, and you get a bit carried away. Then you buy a bazillion books on Amazon. <laughs> then you buy 10,000 micron pens, 10 million jelly roll pens, and you just go down the rabbit hole. Which, if you're an avid crafter, you will do that for every craft that you decide to do. You go down hook, line, and sinker. You go down hard. <laughs> so that's what I have for that book. Then I, I filled this book up completely, spent another five bucks. Actually, I think they're $4.99. And I filled up this book too with all kinds of stuff, all kinds of doodles, patterns, everything. I want to tell you though that these two books, mostly the stuff that's in here, came from Pinterest. Almost everything came from Pinterest. Or I signed up and took a class by Lisa Congdon who does folk art type doodles and just folk art and I took a class online from her and then I went to Pinterest and started looking at her artwork on Pinterest these are her flowers and then I started doodling those doodling does not always have to be what you think of when you look at repetitive pattern type things. Doodling is not always that kind of thing. Although I enjoy the repetitive pattern stuff, but I also enjoy this kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be realistic. It does not have to be fine art. It just has to make you happy. And these make me very happy. 
So that's what my doodling is. I just create things in here that make no sense to anybody except for me. And that's it. And that's all I care about. That it makes sense to me. And when I look at it, I'm happy inside. And I'm satisfied. Yes, sometimes I am critical. I think every artist has to be critical because you have to look that maybe something needs to be a little adjusted. Or maybe you need a fatter line or you need to put an extra line and that will finish it. So when you're critical, it's not always about being negative. Sometimes it's about achieving a happy place with your art. You know what I mean? Anyway, so that's those two books. So I will work on this. I have, today is the 7th of March, and I need to go back and do days 3 through 7 so I can post another video. I don't know if I will doodle on camera, but I will show you what I did to fill my little book up. I'm going to give you a link for the other person that I know has already posted at least two videos for this. And this is my buddy Mary Abrams from the Mary Altier. She is committed to doing this because we like egg each other on and she has an interesting way of doodling for the doodle a day thing you have got to go see this stuff it is very cool and i know she'd appreciate a little love so give her a thumbs up when you go check her stuff out all right that's it for me until i repost trying to put more stuff in my book because right now it looks pretty stinking bare my little squash book so i will see you guys next time Bye. Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I wanted to come back at the tail end of the video you just watched. I'm going to fuse these, I fuse these two videos together um, because I spent the whole day recording and deleting <laughs> everything that I did. And now here I sit <laughs> doing it again. But this time I'm doing it because I can, I finished up to my seven days for the month of March. I've got seven done. I think I showed you these two already. And then I did these five this afternoon because I hate being behind. So I did five of them this afternoon and wanted to show you what they are real quick because I want to get finished. All right. So this one's called Jelly Roll. And it came out of one of Suzanne McNeil's books. It's very simple. The worst part or the hardest part for me is trying to, to color in the black background so that it looks nice and you have to color outside the lines for this. <laughs> All right, so there is this one called Wire Wrap. And I put Suzanne McNeil's name on it, but I'm not really sure if, the, if she's the inventor of this one. I just don't know. But I went ahead and gave her credit just in case because I don't want to get in trouble with somebody's copyright issues. So there's that one. Um, let me, wait, let me say one more thing about this one. This one, I have a black magic marker from Walmart, and you get two of them for 44 cents. And it is basically like a Sharpie. It does bleed through a lot of stuff. And I thought that the tip was going to be perfect for what I wanted to do to this stuff here but it was not I drew it first and the last thing that I did with it is I colored in the line I did the lines on it but before that I colored in the black the coils the thing is is that it really looks awkward and fumbly when you do it with this big tip it doesn't look refined like the rest of the picture so I went back and tried to clean it up with a number five micron pen but you know once you've done the fumbly thing sometimes it really is difficult to go back and fix it I did not want to do it over again because I had this the, I think this was my second time doing this one um, and so I decided that I was going to try to just give it a nice little swirl and try to clean it up on the edges. This one I did do with the Micron pen because this one looks so fumbly that I didn't want this one to look that bad. So you can see there is a bit of a difference. These are fatter and these are better.
I like these better. Fat's not bad, but that wasn't the intention. It's that big fat marker. <laughs> it's out of control. So here's this that looks ref more refined. All right, so the next one is called Helix. And, it, and the original is called Helix, and this is called Helix Variation, and I'll explain to you what the variation is. The Helix starts out as a swirl, as you can see, and then what you do is you start with a very small little round ball, and you go half in the, half, the ball's in half with the line dividing it that you drew, okay? Then you put little lines through the whole balls, all the balls, see all the little teeny lines there? That was done with, uh, I think, a 0 .005 micron, which is a very skinny nib. It's for fine, detailed work. So I did all these, and then I looked in the book, and I saw the variation, and I thought, you know what? I need more black in it. So I took the brush pen, that's the micron brush pen that comes in the set of five mar uh, micron pens, and I colored in the half of every other one like it showed in the variation. This came out of uh, Suzanne McNeil's book also. So this is called Helix. The basic pattern is Helix. And then the, this is Helix Variation. This one is French. I do not speak French, but I wanted to give the, the woman credit. Her name is, I think it's Carriez. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, and I think Genevieve, I'm, I'm not sure which is her first name or middle, oh, this is the pattern name. Genevieve is her first name, and then Krebe uh, is her last name. This pattern here is very simple. It's just about drawing lines on the paper, square, and then coloring in, uh, drawing a little square inside the square you drew and then coloring it in with a black marker and making little lines in the other empty boxes. It's not brain surgery, not ro rocket science. This is a very simple, simple pattern. I like the fact that it's not directional, so that's why I went ahead and did it on the diagonal page. This one, however, does have a direction. This is called Rolo Chain, and it is better to better seen vertically and horizontally see not exactly the way I had hoped you know I didn't do a very good job I should have done it um, this way up and down instead of this way I wasn't thinking when I started I started out with you know your basic across and went to town on it and after I finished I went uh oh and I thought you know what I am not doing this again so this is the original and there's the name of it, Rolo Chain. So here are my first seven days of the month of March. Everyone's different. Everybody has a name. And I attributed them to the maker as much as I could. All right, so I want to show you something because, you know, <laughs> people make fun of my belly bands. They think, well, you don't really need them. Well, guess what? You do. You need something because this is not going to close up nice and flat and small like the others did. Um, this is white cardstock uh, uh, glued onto black cardstock, and the more I glue in here, the heavier it's going to get because there's going to be 30 pieces in here for the front and the back. So it is not going to close. So in order to keep it compact and see how fat it is already, and I've only got seven days in there. So I compress it, put the ponytail rubber band on here, and leave it closed. And like I said before, on my 31st day, I will do a belly band. And I will make the belly band on camera so you can see it. But this one really needs the band to keep it closed because it's just going to be sprawling all over the place. All right, please visit the Mary LTA because I know Mary has her video up. I think she has two videos now about her interpretation of do doing a doodle a day. Please show her some love. She's been very good to me, and I really do appreciate that. So, see you next time. Bye.